Alright, welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about the Circle of Willis. Now the Circle of Willis is technically up here. We are going to start at the level of the vertebral artery, which happens down here. Uh, just as a little housekeeping, this image I got from Wikipedia, and it is going to be a free source, except you see that it's in Chinese. I think it's in Mandarin Chinese. Uh, personally, I don't speak Mandarin, and I'm hoping that most of you don't either. Why is that? It's because then we can go through this together. You'll be surprised. It'll be a learning process. Instead of just memorizing what all this is, uh, I'm going to walk through it. Yes, there is going to be some memorization. However, I'm going to also talk about some clinical syndromes. I'm going to try and piece this together uh, so that way it's a more complete picture because the labels are great. However, it's not a complete picture. So my goal is to make this um, a learning experience as we go through. Now I said we're going to start down here at the level of the vertebral artery, but which one is the vertebral artery? Notice how everything here is an artery. This is the arterial supply. So when I label stuff, uh, I'll probably leave out the artery at the end. Um, I might put an A just to say that it's an artery. So very basically, you've got two vertebral arteries and they're going to come together to form a basilar. So here's the basilar. This is going to be a midline artery. So the basilar. And then you're going to have two vertebral vertebral arteries. So these vertebral arteries, uh, if you're following along, this little diagram right there is the vertebral. And then over here, it's this little diagram is the basilar. See, I got rid of all the extra stuff, the extra stuff coming off of it. So this is very simple. The vertebral artery is going to come through a hole. Now, that hole is called a foramen, also known as uh, the plural of foramen is going to be foramina. So they're going to be coming through a hole. Now, where is that hole found? It's going to be in the transverse process of cervical uh, vertebrae 1 through 6. So this vertebral artery is going to travel up your neck and up the neck it's going to come through the transverse the transverse that's an O for ramina of cervical vertebrae 1 through 6. So you have 7 cervical vertebrae see 7 doesn't have a transverse foramina but one through six do. So that's gonna help protect this vertebral artery. This vertebral artery is important because it's one of two main blood supplies to the brain. And this vertebral artery is gonna merge with the other vertebral artery to form this basilar artery. And this is midline. So this is gonna be midline. It's not gonna have a paired artery associated with it. While these are more lateral from midline and when there's stuff lateral from midline, it'll most likely be paired. So that's, that's some of the basics. Um, let's get rid of this and then continue on our discussion. So we have a lot of arteries to talk about in general. Um, but I do want to point out that it is manageable. I mean, the whole point of this is so we can supply our blood with our brain with blood. I'm dyslexic today. We can supply our brain with blood. Now we have two different sources. We'll have this source up here, and this is coming from the internal carotid artery. And we'll get there, don't worry. However, our other supply is gonna be from the vertebral artery. So we have two main blood supplies to the brain. We have one from the vertebral, and then two from the internal carotid. Now, uh, if you're trying to remember what the internal carotid is, remember it's your internal carotid is gonna come from your common carotid artery you're going to have an internal and an external carotid. The external is going to give a whole bunch of branches to the face and the neck region, while your internal carotid is going to go straight up to the brain. And it's going to go straight up to the brain. It's going to form this circle of Willis. But we'll get there. Don't worry. Hang on with me. This is going to be a fun, fun discussion this morning, at least morning for me. OK, so we've got our vertebral artery and our basilar artery. Now, off of this vertebral, before it pairs to form our midline basilar, we've got this artery down here. Now, this is going to be your posterior, I don't know what my pen's doing today, posterior inferior cerebellar. 
Now the name says a lot. Cerebellar meaning it's going to go to the cerebellum. That's going to control your motor movements. It's going to be like your motor movement processing center. Now you've got the posterior and inferior. Now if I told you that there's an anterior inferior, it would be this artery up here. Now, this inferior kind of precludes that there's going to be a superior. So we've got a posterior and anterior. Now we've got a superior cerebellar artery. So our cerebellum is going to come from primarily three different sources. Now, this artery right here is going to be our uh, superior cerebellar artery. Superior cerebellar. So we have three different sources to the cerebellum. We have a posterior inferior coming off of the vertebral. And then coming off of the basilar, we have two different cerebellar sources that we just covered. So we're getting there. We're starting to fill in this picture. Now over here, off of the basilar artery, off of the basilar, once it's formed, midline, we've got these tiny little branches. Now all of these branches are gonna be called the pontine arteries. The pontine arteries are going to go to your pons. They're going to supply the pons. Now, the pons is part of your, your brainstem, and your brainstem's function is to keep you alive. So if you have a pontine infarct, you may have a brainstem infarct. That is never good. Okay, so we've got our anterior, we've got our cerebellar supply, we've got our pons supply. Now, this artery right here, it's coming off of, off of the vertebral arteries. It's going to form one midline artery. This is going to be your anterior spinal artery. Uh, I'm not going to write it in because I don't think it's that important for our discussion. We're trying to work our way up to the circle of Willis. Um, just realize this is the anterior spinal artery. Okay, so we've covered everything up to this point. So we've, we've kind of gotten all the housekeeping out of the way. We've got our vertebral and our basilar. And off of that basilar, we're going to give off two arteries and it's going to be these two arteries right here so they're paired uh, they're going to be right next to the superior cerebellar artery and these are going to be important they're going to be your PCAs now what does PCA stand for it's going to stand for posterior cerebral artery your posterior cerebral artery this is important now your posterior cerebral artery is going to be divided. You're going to have one portion that's uh, medial and one portion that's lateral. So at the level where this, this kind of artery that we haven't talked about yet, where this artery branches off, this is going to be called P1 portion. And then this area over here is going to be called the P2 portion. And it's simply the portion of the posterior cerebral that hasn't yet branched, and in this one, after it's branched, after it's formed this artery, and now the posterior cerebral artery post-branch portion. So your posterior cerebral artery is gonna be posterior. Now we've got a artery over here, it's labeled over here, but I think I'm gonna label it off over here. This is gonna be called your posterior communicating. Now, I like naming because posterior communicating kind of sounds like there's going to be an anterior communicating, and there is. Over here, posterior cerebral artery kind of means that there's going to be other cerebral arteries, and there are. So, so we'll continue up our route here. So we've got this artery. Now, I've already said that this one right here, so kind of this area right in there, is going to be your internal carotid artery. This is an important one, because if you don't have it, internal carotid, your internal carotid. If you don't have it, you're not going to be able to supply some blood. You will have some blood coming up from your vertebral artery to the basilar, and then from that basilar it can supply some of this circle of Willis. But this internal carotid is going to be an important artery. It'll supply pretty much your circle of Willis. If you occlude it, you will have a brain ischemia. You will have a stroke. Okay, 
So here's your internal carotid. We've got our posterior communicatings leading up to our internal carotid. Those two meet to form this massive artery. This one is going to be called your middle cerebral artery. So your middle cerebral artery. This is going to be a big one, your middle cerebral. Um, okay, then we've got this, uh, this artery up here. Now notice how in the diagram it's labeled um, both pretty much anything that's right there. Everything that's right in there is going to be your anterior cerebral artery. Your anterior cerebral artery. So we've got a posterior, a middle, and an anterior. Okay, that's great. Now I said we have an anterior communicating. Well, not to be confused, this right here is technically part of your anterior cerebral artery. It's this tiny little bridging gap right there that I just colored over and I'll get rid of it. That is technically going to be your anterior cerebral artery, so, or anterior communicating. And communicating. Your anterior communicating is going to be this right there. It's the little bridge that connects the two anterior cerebral arteries together, thus forming a circle. We have a complete circle, which is why it's called the circle of Willis. Now, there are a couple arteries in here that I'm going to have to draw in because this is, again, a very basic diagram. This diagram is just showing the very basics. In reality, there's going to be tiny little arteries coming off every little portion here. Uh, those are not important for our discussion. What is important are what I'm going to draw in. So I just drew in uh, a couple tiny little arteries, and look at where they're coming off. So here's our basilar artery. They're coming off at the top of the basilar artery. Now we've got a syndrome. It's, it's, it's a manifestation. We've got a blood clot. It's coming up, so we've got a thrombus. Um, okay, we've got a thrombus in our calf. So we have a DVT. That DVT is going to throw off an emboli. That emboli is going to come up here, and it'll wedge right there. We have a big clot. Just embolized right there. So it's going to block off blood supply to these tiny little arteries. What are these arteries? Well, these are going to be the thalamoperforating arteries. Now, they can also just simply be called the perforating arteries, but the thalamoperforating arteries are going to be the most technical name that you can get. So the thalamoperforating arteries. Now, the name says a lot. They're going to perforate to the thalamus. So the thalamus is going to be affected. Thalamus. Okay, so where are we? Here's our basilar artery. We're at the top of the basilar artery. What is this syndrome called when we get a clot there? It's going to be very unique. It's going to have a really tough to understand name. It's going to be called top of the basilar syndrome. Top of basilar syndrome. And that's going to be where you have a clot that's going to occlude these thalamoperforating arteries, which is going to affect the thalamus. You're going to have thalamus problems. Uh, your, so like I said, your pons is going to be like your functions, like your very life-sustaining functions. Your thalamus, however, is going to be primarily a relay center. If I had to give one word to describe the thalamus, it would be relay. Well, why is that? It's primarily going to take all of your sensory information from your body, process it, and then distribute it to the cortex to its appropriate location. It'll be a relay center. Um, primarily your sensory information, however, it does have aspects of sleep and motor, but I'm just going to write sensory. So it's going to be a sensory relay center. If you block off the thalamus, you're going to have a lot of sensory problems. You're also going to have some sleep disturbances, maybe some motor problems, depending on which arteries get occluded and what parts of the thalamus die. Okay. So we've covered, we've covered a lot here. Uh, just in recap, we've got two vertebral arteries. They're going to go up to form a basilar artery. 
Off of that basler, we're going to have quite a few different things, and their names are very appropriate. Whoever named this gave it some thought. Uh, the name says a lot. You have an anterior and a posterior inferior cerebral artery. You also have a superior cerebral artery, on the other hand. If you have an inferior, you should have a superior. It makes sense. Um, also, you have cerebral arteries. These are your big ones. Uh, the PCA is going to be called your posterior cerebral artery. Your MCA is going to be your middle cerebral artery. And your ACA is going to be your anterior cerebral artery. Now these are big ones. Why is that? Because if you occlude one of these, you have massive portions of your brain with, uh, with predictable symptoms, uh, depending on which one's caught. And I'll, I might make a video of that later on. Right now we're just trying to cover the basics of the circle of Willis. You've got communicating arteries, your posterior and your anterior communicating. Now it's important to realize that your internal carotid and your vertebral arteries are going to supply all of this. Blood is going to come from the heart to your internal carotid, and then from there it's going to go into the circle of Willis. However, if you block that, you may have a little bit of blood flow from your vertebrals. Um, they'll come up through your basilar and then to your circle of Willis. However, the most important one is going to be your internal carotid. You've got to have your internal carotid alive, otherwise you'll have a stroke. Um, otherwise, we have a syndrome called top of the basilar syndrome. Um, test, test riders, you know, they, they kind of like this one. This is a very medium yield. The high yield ones are going to be your ACA, your MCA, and your PCA. These are going to be your major players. If I was a board question writer, if I was a test question writer, I would ask questions on these. If you occlude the middle cerebral artery, what gets occluded? So I would take a little bit of time to read about that. Um, however, if you have top of the basilar syndrome, just realize that it's your thalamoperforating arteries, which is going to affect your thalamus. And then, uh, and then over here, if you have your superior cerebellar, it'd be your cere your cerebellum that's going to be affected. So hopefully, you found this video useful. Um, sorry, it's a lot of scribbles at the very end. Um, it's a lot of stuff to talk about, and a lot of this is memorization. However, if you break it down, if you go through the naming components of it, it does help. So uh, like this video if you found it useful, subscribe for more, uh, and again, I always love hearing your comments. Thank you very much.